Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dami, also known as Dami Studios. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Thursday, the 6th of December, 2018, and this is episode 322, and we're back together in the same room! Yeah. How excited are you? Yes. It's much easier than <clears throat> um, doing it on conferencing software so yes Dammy came home last night and I'm so excited she's here for a month so you'll get a month of us together and it also is gonna make Christmas karaoke a whole lot easier um we'd like to say a big welcome back we love you guys and the heart's easier too <laughs> to all of our returning viewers and a big hi to any new viewers thanks for giving us a shot we hope you enjoy the show Dammy, we had somebody introduce themselves in the rivalry group this week. Why don't you give them a shout out? All right. Adriana, who is a Holden Gouveia from Massachusetts. Welcome. We're very glad to have you, Adriana. Um, Dammy, if somebody's not a member of our rivalry group, what should they do and why? You should join and introduce yourself in our introductions thread because you'll get a shout out on the next episode and be able to participate in all our owls and giveaways. That's right. So we are announcing owl winners for the Artistic Autumnal Owl today. Um, the Winter Wonderland Owl has officially started, and we're doing a review and giveaway today as well. So, lots of reasons that you should join our Ravelry group. All right, well, we have a lot to talk to you about. I might have six finished objects, so we probably should get started. Here we go. So now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. What's on your needles, Dammy? Um, the straightforward mints are still on my needles, but it was finals week. So you can get them out and knit on them right now, right? Yeah. Why don't you just show us the progress since it's it's been a couple of weeks since you showed them? I don't have them in here because I haven't really been looking on them because it was finals week. Oh, I thought you brought it in here so you could show them what you were working on. Just imagine. Well, tell us about them so that we can visualize them in our heads. <laughs> Just imagine a pair of straightforward fingerless mitts by Mona Jogger on the US 3's 3.25mm needles in the Yaris Penguin Soup Emperor Sock in the Baker colorway. Okay. And I think it would be a reasonable goal for you to finish them before you went back to school. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, well, are you not working on anything else? No. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's, that? What's on your needles? Okay, well, I'm back to knitting because something is finished. Um, I didn't take a picture of this, but I'm like working on it right now, so I'm going to see if I can show you. I haven't showed it to you in not a photo uh, in a long time. This, this thing is my tin stitch zigzag blanket um, that I have affectionately named because of Gilmore Girls. When you think I'll zig, I'll zag. Then when you think I'm going to zag, I do zag just to mess you up for the next time when I might zig blanket. This is the Tin Stitch Zigzag Pattern by Frankie Brown. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. You check, she has lots of really great patterns, free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I'm on US 4, 3.5 mil needles, and I'm currently using Space Cadet Ombre and Gradient Mini Skeins in the Ombre MS1403 colorway. So it's five colors. So I already did one stripe of this. So I did, I went from darkest to lightest and then lightest to darkest in one stripe. And now this stripe I'm doing light, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest um, every two zigzags. So I have five and a half zigzags left in this stripe. So I will have it finished and have started on the next zigzag by the time we record again next week. Um, I'm back to doing one and a half zigzags a day because um, I really would like to finish this during Stash Dash mm -hmm. next summer. So, and then I'm working on Dammy's birthday wrap, which I know her birthday was almost a couple months ago, but I'm working on it. This is the Cathedral Wrap um, by Hohi Locatelli. It's on US 6s, four mil needles, and I'm using Knit Pick Stroll Hand Painted in the Borealis colorway. And I finished the third band and the fourth band You've got your needle right in my face. I know. I'm trying to hold it out. And I've just barely started the fifth band. So there was there's five bands of 20 rows. And then I have to do 150 gazillion rows of just a two-pattern thing. And then graft it together with the other one that I've already done all this on. So I would love to have this done by 
the time you go back to school. Hmm. Is that going to happen? I don't know because I do have some other knitting that is happening and I should be uh, soonly getting yarn for my next design, which I'm so excited about because it's going to be a My Favorite Murder mystery wrap pattern. But there's going to be a kit with yarn by Diane of Suburban Stitcher. There's going to be a special glass stitch marker from Ann Tudor. And my friend Amanda of Nerdy Knits and Designs is doing t-shirts for us for the kits. And I'm so excited. So um, I don't have my notes in here with me, but I think we're going to put them up for pre-order in February and start the actual mystery knit along like in April because it's going to be up. I think it's a four to six week pre-order. Um, yeah. I'm really excited. This is the first time I've ever designed a mystery wrap. And a portion of the proceeds are going to be going to end the backlog. So I'm really excited about that. So that's rumbling in my head. And as soon as the yarn gets here, I will start in on that one. And then I also have a sock pattern to design from the self-striping yarn that's in the ball. Um, so that'll be coming at some point too. Okay, and then the other thing I have on my needles, I'm almost done with the first one, is, oops, it's the wrong bag. Um, so normally for my bestie Katie's boys, Noah and Izzy, um, for Christmas I knit them a hat. But their heads don't grow that much by this point. There was this piece of hair right here that is driving me absolutely insane. Uh, I'm trying to wait until a little closer to Christmas before we re-bleach it and dye it, uh, re-pink it. Um, anyway, so their heads don't grow that much. And so this year I was like, I asked her, I was like, what if I did mittens for them? For this year she's like oh that's a great idea do that so i am doing the world's simplest mittens by tin can knits um on us 3 3.25 mil and us 5 3.75 mil needles in the vitalena dream in the tapenade colorway so i started with izzy's i did make the cuff a little longer than it said because i thought it could be really cool if he wanted to fold it up like that mm -hmm. so I'm actually done with the decreases up here, but I, I finished that the decreases last night at night, but I had to run to go pick you up from the ferry. So I didn't get a chance to, to uh, cut it and weave it through there, and then I just need to get the thumb stitches and knit those. And then the first one will be done. Um, and I'm going to do Noah's in the exact same yarn, but what I'm going to do is on the palm of the mitts, I'm going to uh, duplicate stitch or embroider their first initial on them. So since they are going to have the same yarn, they'll know, Noah will know the N ones are his and Izzy will know the I ones are his. So, um, yeah. So I think on Noah's too, I'm going to make the the cuff a little bit longer so that if, you know, they could have it this way where it would like tuck under their, their shirt or they could fold it up and wear it like that. So... Um, and these are really simple. I just have to take the time to do them. But I would like to get them done soonly so I can get them out in the post, hopefully before Christmas. I know they won't be upset if it doesn't get there by Christmas, but I'm going to try. And I have not gotten back to my English paper piecing yet. Um, it's been a crazy little bit of a chunk of time around here. Um, but I asked Dammy yesterday if she could help me. No, you didn't. I told Dammy yesterday that I was pressing her into service to press some fabric for me. It's not a lot, just a little bit. And I'll love you forever. You already do, or should. I'll love you forever, forever more. Forever and ever. Okay. And that's everything that I'm currently working on. But like I said, I have six FOs, so let's move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about her finished projects. There's a lot. So, first up is my Nanny Suemo Granito sweater. This is the Granita pattern, Granito pattern by Hohi Locatelli on US 2.5-3 mil and US 4 3.5 mil needles. And the yarn is Nano Stitch Laboratory Scientific Sock in the one-of-a-kind lab experiment colorway. Um, and I'm gonna put some pictures here up on screen because I'm not gonna stand up, but I am completely in love with this sweater. I wore it to church Sunday. I wore a tank under it. I didn't wear a t-shirt like I have on today, but... Um, it ended up being 108,973 stitches. Overachiever. I know. It's like the equivalent. I, it, they, it had to be 50,000. 
And I won a prize. There's There was lots of prizes donated, which is lovely, and I donated some as well. Um, but I got to pick a pattern of my choice. Um, and so I chose... I should have opened it. Um, one of, somebody, somebody knit it in the for um, Nanny Swimmo this year, and it's a DK weight, and she knit the smaller size, and it was over 50,000 stitches. Um, so I will have to knit the bigger size, and so it will definitely be more than 50,000, and I think that's what I'm going to use next year for Nanny Swimmo. It's the Nin Nil Chick Swancho by Caitlin Hunter. So it's a poncho with sleeves. And the lady who did it uh, did it in really pretty uh, pinks and grays. Um, it was lovely. So I, that's the p pattern I picked. So I think I'm going to do that. I'll try to remember to put that in the show notes so that you can see it if you want to see what it looks like. So, but I'm really pleased with it. I love the pockets. The only modifications I made was I made it longer before I started the pockets. And I did twisted rib on the, the cuffs and the collar and the bottom of the sweater. Your hands are cold. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, sh I should have put mitts on. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I'm thrilled that this is finished. It took me longer than I expected, but I was working like 10 to 12 hours a week extra that I ha didn't work last year um, on this during this time. So I finished it, I think it was on the 29th. So, um, but I love it. It's cozy. And I think I'm just going to wear it every day if I could. So, And then I caught up on preemie hats because I didn't do any preemie hats in November when I was working on Nanny Swimmo. So I did numbers 44, 45, 46, 47, and 48. This is my free top-down preemie hat pattern on Ravelry on US 6s. So number 44, I did it in the Knitology Bouncy Worsted in the Dashboard colorway. 45, I did in Lion Brand Color Waves DK in the U Unicorn, or not Acorn Colorway, not Unicorn, Acorn Colorway. Number 46, I did in Dale Garn Lurk Plus in the Lavender Colorway and Premier Yarn Serenity Sock in the Chili Colorway. Number 47, I did in Nitpick City Tweed DK in the Enchanted Colorway. And X-Ray Anne hand-dyed fingering sock weight in the semi-solid battleship colorway because I ran out of yarn of the green. So I did the, the gray for the edging, and I did the same thing on this one. Uh, this is number 48. I did mint rain hand-dyed tough sock in the police box colorway and, again, uh, the semi-solid battleship. I held this d doubled, and I love how it just kind of, I don't know, it made a really cool design holding it doubled. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have made it do that if I tried. So, so there are five preemie hats finished in one week. So, um, yeah, it's nice to be caught up with that. And I'm hoping, like I said, to try to have Dammy's, um, wrap finished before she leaves to go back to school. I'll get done with Noah and Izzy's gloves pretty quickly. I have a friend who is having a baby any day now. Um, but it's her second and, um, they didn't find out if they're having a boy or girl. We all predict boy. Um, but we're, I think we're going to do a welcome baby party in January instead of a baby shower. Um, so, um, and the stuff that I knit wouldn't fit the baby right now anyway. So I'm going to, oh. I thought that was pink. No, it's a puppy outside apparently. No, upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Um. So I'm kind of waiting on doing that stuff because if it's a boy, I'll do one hat pattern. If it's a girl, I'll do a different one. So, um, but I'll still do the baby sophisticate and the baby vertebrae, the newborn vertebrae and the baby chino socks um, for her. And then I've got yarn for the hubs, the Dr. Hubs and Dammy and I Christmas socks that are not going to get done before Christmas, I'm fairly sure. So... I will do the best I can. I know y'all will appreciate socks whenever I finish them. So, And in, the, in a couple weeks or so, we're going to talk about what we accomplished this year and looking at goals and such for next year. I'm thinking I'm not going to do as much obligation knitting next year. There's some things I would love to knit for me that I have not done because 
I was knitting some stuff that I felt obligated to knit. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show, yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. So, if you don't know, I'm doing Vlogmas 2018. Vlogmas. Vlogmas. Vlog. Vlogmas. There's a link in the show notes to get to it, but it's I'm uploading them all to our YouTube channel. And um, they're about 10-ish minutes long each. Um, I'm talking about... Cabin Pressure Advent that Dammy and I are doing together, listening to a new episode of Cabin Pressure every day. Uh, well, it's not a new, it's an old episode, but we're listening to an episode every day um, in the order that they were released, not alphabetical. We just finished season one this morning. Um, so I'm talking about that. Um, I am highlighting patterns that are available uh, in our 31 Days of Christmas uh, sale. And... I'll tell you about the the new this next week's sale uh, at the end of the show, uh, and then of course you're getting pink pearl content and lots of other stuff. Um, so it's just a fun way to um, to spend the holidays together. So I'm enjoying doing that. So check it out if you have not. On Sunday night, the hubs and I went to Taproot's Tales of Christmas, uh, the Taproot Theater was created by a couple of Seattle Pacific University students as their senior project hmm. about 40 years ago-ish. Because this year was the 40th year that Taproot has come to St. Charles. So, um, 1978 was the first year it came. So, they have a theater in Seattle proper. But they also have a touring company. They do Christmas touring. Um, they do touring into... Um, like schools and um, they have like classes like they have youth and teen classes and such but we saw the Foolish Wiseman and we had Gabriel Adams, Ashley Coe, Brian, Byron, Byron Walker and Nikki Weissel is the uh, director um, and they did a really good job it was fun to to do that so uh, I think they said that they were pretty much sold out of tickets for the Christmas at Pemberley, but there's still tickets for Charlie Brown Christmas. And then, uh, I'm not sure what they're going to be doing in 2019. This is 2018 main stage. But you can check them out. I linked them in the show notes uh, if you're interested in that. We are letting y'all vote this year for Christmas karaoke. So uh, click on the link in the show notes to go Put in your vote for what song we should sing at the end of the episodes uh, during uh, this lead up to Christmas. And then our Christmas episode, we sing a song every segment. So um, stay tuned for that as well. Do you have anything? Oh, kitty. We, we need to put it in the show notes. Miss, Tell us. I got a kitty pillow. It's soft and nice. And it was on sale. It has no face. It's minimalist. I know, but show the tail because it's really cute. Okay, we need to put that in the show notes so I can link it up. Have you named this kitty? No. Fluffy. <laughs> Fluffy the kitty. Um, tabby. That's cute, Tabby the kitty. Even though it's not a tabby. Gray. My soul. Uh, okay, do we have any other yummies? Pink is adorable. Pink Pearl always is adorable. Yeah, and you're getting lots of Pink Pearl content in the in the vlogmas. All right, well then let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is that, Dammy? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo a Day Challenge. We have a list of photo prompts for each month, so you take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorites from Instagram. That's right. So December's theme is... Christmas, Advent, winter, winter, all that kind of stuff. So, um, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos.
Great job, everybody. So it's never too late to join in. Just take a look at the prompt for the day. So for example, this Thursday, the sixth when we're recording this, the prompt is 9.30. So I have set an alarm on my phone for 9.30 tonight because we were in the midst of bathing the kitty in, at 9.30 this morning and it was a massacre. Um, so I will take a picture tonight at 9.30, uh, but interpret the prompt however you want. Post your photo on Instagram. Make sure in the caption you use hashtag GGK Crafty Pad because that's how we find your photo. If you're participating in GGK Crafty Pad and you have a private account on Instagram, you need to PM Dammy, who is Dammy's Doodles, so she can follow you because otherwise we can't see your photos. Yeah. So, um, yep. All right, do you want to talk about this upcoming event? Sure. I'll be attending all of them. So before the eclipse is the winter play at the SPU Theater, and I'm in it. It's a selection of short comedies by Anton Chekhov, as you can see. It's comedy. And so I'm just going to... Tell us about it. Oh, you want me to read it? Yeah, go for it. Under the gaze of the sun and moon, a small group of actors revels in reels at the comedy of life as they portray characters from some of Anton Chekhov's funniest short plays. From proposals to town meetings, from family squabbles to ceremonies and celebrations, these jokes, as Chekhov called them, capture the foibles and frustrations of the modern world. Yes. So it is starts on January 31st. Runs February 1st and 2nd, and then 7th to 9th. Uh, Showtimes are 7.30 p.m., plus there's a 1 o'clock matinee on the 2nd of February. Mm -hmm. um, there's a discount if it's a group, and we're look at, looking at taking a group, going with a group on opening night on the 31st. So if you're local and you're interested in attending, let me know because uh, we can get a discount if there's 10 of us that go together. 10 plus. 10 plus. So... Um, yeah, so I'm very excited for this. Do you want to tell us anything about the roles that you're playing? No. She's playing the moon. It's a secret! Oh. Oh my gosh. Why is it a secret? Just because. Because why? I don't I, understand. It, it's not really a secret. I just wanted you to be surprised. Oh. Surprise! That's it. That's it. Um, that, yeah. And I'm hoping to attend Madrona for the day, which is also in February. I can't remember when is it. I think it's close to Valentine's Day weekend. So, um, but we'll let you know on that. I'm, I'm looking at going with some friends. So, uh, just going down for the day. So, um, all right. Well, I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. Now we're going to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. Dammy. So, reading? as I may have mentioned, it was finals week, so I was busy reviewing everything I'd read in the quarter for finals. So I haven't started a new novel yet, but I will find one. I don't know what I'm thinking, but I'll find one. Okay. But in the meantime, I'm also reading The Glass Scientists, which is a webcomic by Sabrina Katungo. Cool. And are you getting your 15 minutes a day in? Yes. With finals, with reading, yes. all those books. What am I referencing? The October, November, December, RAL, read along. Yay. So this is a challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day. It doesn't matter what you're reading, audiobooks count. I just want you to read. So um, there is a finish line thread in the Ravelry group where you post once and then you edit your post. Minimum amount of information you need to give us is that you're reading 15 minutes a day. Um, but you can give more, like, exact timing, um, what you're reading. Silver Luna 2112, 2112 always does a really cool um, pie chart. And there was something else she posted this week about it. I think she challenged herself to a certain number of minutes or something. Um, so that's fun to see. Um, and then there's two categories of winners or finishers, I guess. If you read at least 88 of the 92 days, so 88 to 92, you'll get be entered into one or more giveaways for any of our eBooks. 
you'll get a 20% off a single pattern coupon code from us and a virtual badge. If you read between 61 to 92 days, no, 61 to 87 of the 92 days, you'll be entered to one or more giveaways for single pattern and you'll get a virtual badge. And the uh, hashtag is hashtag GDKRAL18. And I think we mentioned it last week. We will be continuing this into 2019. And we're looking at doing something where if you do the top level for all four quarters to do something special. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, as for what I've been reading, I'm still reading Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. I'm still rereading Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is the second book in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling, um, along with the Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and the Swish and Flick and all Potter podcast. I started reading the Cat in the Stack series by Miranda James. This series is so freaking adorable. Uh, I read books one to three. So the premise is this male librarian who um, his wife passed away and his aunt passed away and she left him this house in this quaint little town and he's um he's in his 50s and he retired from his job and so now he just works part-time as um oh what i can't remember the the title they use but he like essentially is like a curator of old books at the university library he does that like part-time and he volunteers at the local public library but he has a cat that he rescued from the library parking lot that is a Maine Coon who weighs, it's a big Maine Coon, weighs over 35 pounds. Oh, that's a fluffy boy. And walks on a harness and leash and goes everywhere with him except for church. And they have been solving mysteries together. Mm. And it's an adorable series. So I'm waiting for the next book in the series to become available at the library. So... I think there's like 10 or 11 books. So um, it's cute. It's cute. The The librarian guy also takes in student boarders in his aunt's house because mm -hmm. that's what she did. So it's fun. It's not fun for somebody to get murdered, but it's a fun series. And then I read True Places by Sonia Yorg. Yorg. So this was um, the book that I chose from the... Uh, it's called something like Kindle First or something that we get with Amazon. And you get to pick one of like six books to get for free. And I got this one and it's, it was very, it was, a, it was a, well, it was a thriller mystery suspense. So the premise of it is this woman found a girl in her teens like emaciated and dying on the side of the road at a park at a park uh like a like a national park type thing not a like city park and um she was all alone and had been living in the woods with her parents before her dad left and her mom died and she had no knowledge of technology of of what normal life was they lived in this cabin and they were isolated from the world um and so it's her story of this, this girl's story of healing and becoming well but then also trying to figure out who she was in this new context but it was also the story of the mother who had lost her identity becoming so much the I'm I'm the room parent. I go on every field trip. I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this, and had no identity of her own left. Um it was interesting. It was really interesting. It took a it it wasn't what I expected it to be. But it was a really interesting book and the ending was really satisfying. So um yeah. So I read that and then I've just been reading some fluff while I'm waiting for books to become available that I got on hold. So, um, that's reading, watching. Um, of course I'm continuing my Hallmark Christmas movie watching and somebody sent me this week a t-shirt, a picture of a t-shirt, um, that said something about being a Hallmark Christmas movie watcher. And I saw some socks too. Gotta love it. So I've watched 
Christmas on Honeysuckle Lane, A Shoe Addict's Christmas, Mingle All the Way, and Christmas Wonderland. And I actually have two more that I have not watched yet. I'm continuing to rewatch season seven of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I have, I think maybe around like 10 episodes left. And I'll be done with rewatching the series. I started watching a new to me show called 12 Monkeys. And that might be familiar because there was a film, a movie of it, I want to say like in the 90s. Um, and the premise of it, it's a, it's a sci-fi show, is that a plague wiped out 6 billion people on Earth. So there's only this, these small groups of people who are immune left. And this happened in like 2043, I believe, is, well, no, it happened, it, it happened like in like our present time. But there's, in 2043, a group of scientists are working to send a guy back in time to try to stop the plague from happening. And he's going back and forth. And of course, there's things that happen and everything. So, and he, there's a scientist in present day that's helping him. And uh, she, she's a, what is it, a, vi a virologist? I don't know. Who is it that studies? Um, I don't know. She works for the CDC. Um, so that's a Center for Disease Control. If you are not from the U.S., uh, so I'm about I'm only I'm probably about halfway through season one, and there's four seasons of it. Um, so I've been kind of I've been alternating between it and Buffy when I haven't been watching like new stuff. Um, just I'm not a huge fan of the final season of Buffy. Mm. But I don't want to not finish it. So it's been nice to kind of alternate them back and forth. Um, we're watching season five of The Flash. Season 14 of Supernatural. Jack is dying. Jack is Lucifer's son. Uh, and nothing they've tried has healed him. And Lucifer's human host is going way, 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 way off the deep end. Lucifer's out of him now. But he's like killing people. Oh bad um watching season one of murphy brown i don't know if i mentioned last week it didn't get renewed so it's a one season thing only season four of blind spot kurt finally knows that jane is remy finally i don't know how he didn't know um supergirl season four arrow season seven let me pop back to doctor who series 11 um it takes you away is the episode there was this whole bit about a woolly rebellion where the sheep are going to rebel and they're going to, there's going to be a thing where the sheep and the humans have to um, figure out a new way to interact and it's, it's, there's a bloody massacre, will occur, but massacre. It was very funny. Okay. Um, the actress who played Hana did an amazing job. She um, is blind. And... Um, she did an amazing, amazing job. I saw some stuff behind the scenes um, of her doing it. And, um, yeah, I was very, very impressed with her. Um, okay, the story of the grief and loss in this episode was really, really powerful. And then we get to a talking frog who is a sentient being in a whole different universe who is talking to the doctor. What the heck? Without that, it was a really good episode. With it, I was like, what, what the heck? So, yeah. So that one kind of threw me. I think we're getting close to the end of Series 11, and then there's not a Christmas special this year. There's a New Year's special, mm -hmm. which has been some drama. About. Um, and then Outlander Season 4, Savages was the episode. Claire learned to knit, and she was, like, knitting in the episode, and I was like, yay, because remember, like, an episode or two ago, we were talking about it, and then, totally out of the blue, I didn't even recognize him the first time I watched it, till they told us who it was, Murtaugh is back. In the books, he died in the Battle of Culloden. Mm. Murtaugh is Jamie's godfather, mm. and um, so Jamie and young Ian go to the town that's, like, a three-day ride away, drive away in the buggy, wagon, whatever. Um, 
and the horse's bit breaks. Oh, no. And so young Ian takes it to the blacksmith. And the blacksmith is like, oh, no, I'm at the end of my day. No, I'm not, you'll just have to wait till tomorrow. And young Ian ends up paying an exorbitant amount of price for him to stay and fix the bit. Well, when young Ian gets back with the bit and tells Jamie what's happened, Jamie is furious because that was all the money he had. Oof. And so he goes in and starts yelling at the uh, blacksmith. And the blacksmith turns around and they look at each other. Jamie? Marta? And then they hug. <laughs> and it was so sweet. And they... Ah. Because they never thought they'd see each other again because the last time we saw Marta was like in season two, maybe, or early three, when he is taken away to be, uh, to the, to the States, uh, to, to America, to be, um, to be, like he has to, he has to work like hard labor for a number of years. What's that called? indentured yes. um, as punishment because of all the stuff with Culloden and everything and Jamie was left there and so they never thought they'd see each other again and then um, they try, Jamie tries to convince Murtaugh to come work with him and take some of the land he has 10,000 acres and he's like no I need to stay here I need to do this he is he's um, he's like in charge of or one of the leaders of um, the regulators I think is what it's called who are fighting against the um, the corrupt tax men who are ta getting their taxes for the for the king um, but then we're back at Fraser's Ridge once Jamie and Ian get home and then all of a sudden I don't know how much time it passed but Claire is gathering firewood and she hears somebody wh whistling Boogie Woogie Boogle Boy ah because she had taught that to Murtaugh when she and Murtaugh were looking for Jamie, like back in season two. And she turned and she was like, Murtaugh, Jamie said you were coming. And they embrace and they, oh, and they talk and they're so happy. And it was lovely. There was a whole lot of really bad stuff that happened in this episode that I'm not talking about. I, I can tell you off camera because it's that bad. Okay. But let's talk about the positive things, knitting and Murtaugh. So, and then next week's episode, Lord John and Jamie's son, who doesn't know he's Jamie's son. <laughs> There's going to be all the drama and measles. And measles. And measles. Measles. Um, okay, listening to, I've been listening to our CC and Demi Love Christmas Musicals playlist and My Favorite Murder. I just finished listening to that, to the new episode today. Um... Yeah, there was a murder in the 1700s, mm -hmm. and then there was a murder involving a barrel, and it being hidden away for many, many years. Um, and then, like I mentioned, in Vlogmas, we're listening to Cabin Pressure Advent. Yep. So a new episode, and it's not a new episode, an episode every day. Um, Edinburgh was a hard one for me because that made me miss Edinburgh. Um, but the episode, what's F? Fee. Fitten. Fitten. And the whole, ah, 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 bit when Arthur's trying to get, um, Douglas. I forgot Douglas's name the other day, and I was talking about it on Vlogmas, and then your daddy is like, Douglas! Mm -hmm. trying to get Douglas to tell him what song he was singing. That whole bit is hysterical. Mm. What have you been listening to besides Cabin Pressure? Just random playlists. Okay. They did the, I got the email from today from Spotify about like looking back at my 2018. Mm -hmm. I listened to a lot of Sarah Bareilles apparently. A lot of Hamilton. A lot of show tunes. I'm not giving away my shot. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Things like that. Um, okay. Well, I think we are ready then to move on to the next segment. And now we're going to...
going to talk about the September, October, November Artistic Autumnal Owl, which is over. Yay! All right, so Dammy, why don't you give shout outs to everyone who finished <laughs> stuff in the last few days of the owl? Okay. Angie's Hip, April Cox 26, Asteride, Crafty Sarah, D Door 4, Elsa and M, I Now Hour, Falling Star 12, Philippa MC, JP Music 15, Carleen Page, Knitter Chow, Knitting Kitten 2, Mama Mia 64, Panushka, Psycho Hulakian, Ramona Firehorse, Sassanak Knits 219, Scrap Fair, Silver Luna 2112, Try Linda, Yarnsmith Dory, and Yell Cat 2. Great job, everybody. Um, okay, so I locked this thread the morning of the 1st of December, Yeah. and then I was like, hey Siri, give me a random number between 2 and whatever it was, and drew all the winners. So, if you are a prize winner, let's look here, everything is being shipped except for the final prize, which is a pattern prize. So, unless you are that final winner, I need you to PM me Java Pearl on Ravelry, with your full name and mailing address as soon as you see this. Um, and I will get your prize shipped out to you. Um, you have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, so, let's, do, do you want me to say what it is and you'll say the winner? Okay, here we go. We have an orange camper bag by Art by Anna that was donated by Rhonda who is dueling needles. The winner is? 220 Wombat Knitter. We have a small orange bag by Knit RX Sews, also from Rhonda Dueling Needles. 101, I Now Hour. We have a library book bag and Notions Pouch by Bags by Awesome Granny, also donated by Rhonda Dueling Needles. The winner is... 491, Skyly Knits. We have a skein of Undead Yarn Vampire in the Don't Eat the Baby colorway from Eileen, who is leaner. The winner is... 525, Shirley Knits, 123. We have Cascade Yarns Casablanca in the fall colorway we've got two winners each of them are going to win one skein of the yarn the two winners are 157 jodadaya and 378 little angel sg2 yes we have a knit companion stand it up the winner is 648 april cox 26. we have a halloween stitch marker set made and donated by teresa who is jazzy. jazzy's creations the winner is 296 little mermaid okay we have Two Bride of Frankenstein, spring, ooh, Bride of Frankenstein stitch marker sets, and a one labyrinth stitch marker set, donated, made and donated by Julia, who is Nimrusa Pandia's jewels. There's three winners. They're each going to get one random set. I'm, I, I'm just going to grab one, and that's the one you're going to get. So the three winners are: two forty six Silver Luna two one one two, five nineteen S Keeling. And 576 Falling Star 12. And then the final prize is a copy of the Then When You Think I'll Zag I Zig pattern designed and donated by Amanda, who is Skyly Knits on Ravelry. The winner is 479 Knit Live Love. Okay, so again, the winners are Wombat Knitter, I Now Hour, Skyly Knits, Shirley Knits 123, Joe Dadaya, Little Angel SG2, April Cox 26. Little Mermaid, Silver Luna 2112, S. Keeling, Falling Star 12. All of y'all, I need your PME Java Pearl with your full name and mailing address. And Knit Live Love, I just need to know you've seen this, and I will let Amanda know so she can give the pattern to you. Again, a humongous, humongous thank you to our prize donors. We love you guys a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, and congratulations to all the winners. Again, remember, you have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. All right, well, since this one is over, let's talk about the new owl. And now we're going to talk about our December, January, February. Walking in a winter wonderland. Owl. Do 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 do. Tell us about it, Dammy. So this owl runs from the 1st of December through the 28th of February and is for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us relates to winter. The fallback was made in the winter. Yes. Even if you're in a different uh, hemisphere. hemisphere. Still counts. So no whips are allowed in this owl. Your project must have been begun no earlier than the 1st of December and finished no later than the 28th of February. The other main rule of this owl is each project of at least 20 yards that you enter and finish 
but you finish an enter into the Ravelry FO thread counts as one entry into the giveaways, but if your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post with other projects that together total at least 20 yards. Yes. And feel free to play dip and other owls as long as it fits in with other rules. That's totally fine. It's the first podcast of the month, so we're going to talk about prizes. But if you would like to donate a prize to this owl or to um, for other things, um, feel free to email us at geekygirlsknit.com. No. Geekygirlsknit at gmail.com. There you go. Or PM me, Java Pearl and Ravelry, um, because we really appreciate your support. Uh, you want to start? You want me to? I'll start. Okay. So we have a Christmas tree bag by Donna Designs Shop, donated by Rhonda, who is dueling needles. We have a Christmas stitch marker set made and donated by Teresa, who is Jazzy's Creations. We have a Seattle Seahawks stitch marker set. Also made and donated by Teresa Jazzy Creations. We have two Illuminity enamel pins made and donated by Julia, who is Nimrus of Pandia's Jewels. Two winners will each win one pin. And this whole set, a project bag from Neighborhood Fiber Co. and a red cable notebook donated by Marianne, who is Knit Central. A Lose Me Not Mini stitch marker. It's a Lose Me Not Mini stitch mm-hmm. marker size. Stitch marker size from Jambi Smiley, Ginger Twist Studio Needle Gauge, Nessie Stitch Marker, and 15 grams of silk, Kill Top Cloud Silk Hankies. Yes, that's, a, that's this whole set. All that stuff is together. Ah! We have a skein of Fairy Tale Knits Elven Music in the green tonal colorway from Eileen, who is leaner. Fairy Tale Knits Elven. I just said that one. Oh. Space Cadet Lu- Lucina. Lucina. No Snow from Eileen, who is leaner. It's the no stone, no colorway. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And Zorger Opal Diamond in the 6524 from Eileen. Uh, I, a colorway from Eileen, who is also leaner. So thank you again to everybody who donated prizes. And if you would like to know more about them, you can go to... GeekyGirlsNet.com. Where there's larger photos and links and all that jazz. Okay, keep going. Um, you must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate in this owl. There's a hashtag if you would like to post on social media or tag your projects. It's hashtag GGKWinter1819. The FO thread is going to be locked on the morning of the 1st of March and winners will be drawn for the next podcast following that. And if you are one of those winners, you will have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. And also there's a chatter thread on Ravelry where you can encourage each other along the way and where I also give shoutouts, but I also give shoutouts here for people who have finished projects. And so why don't I do that? Oh, well, I was going to say, if you have any questions about the owl or anything like that, you can post them there or, or feel free to PM us as well. So yes, Dami, who has already finished projects in the first six days of December? Not me. No, ah. I have. I finished all those preemie hats. I have finished lots of projects. Another Yarn 9, Craft Sun Tool, Falling Star 12, Joe Dadaya, JP Music 15, and a Little Angel SG2. Great job, everybody. So keep working on those projects. You've got almost three months to get them done, and you might be a prize winner. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. That's right. So this week's question is for you, Dammy. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Sarah, who is Crafty Sarah on Ravelry from Pennsylvania, asks, Dammy, have you found a knitting group at school and are friends interested in having you teach them how to knit? Well, I haven't found a knitting group. And I haven't, like, offered to teach people how to knit a bunch because I've been really busy. Yes. But. But. There are knitters on your floor. Yes. At least a couple that I know of. Yeah. So, have you so, talked knitting with them? No. I, have you seen what they are knitting? Like, a little bit. Well, like, what were they knitting? I don't know. I just saw them knitting. Oh. I, one was knitting a headband at some point. I saw when yeah. we, like, took you to school. I know it's hard to balance and fit it in. I mean, I know, I know it's hard because I can multitask and knit at the same time. But you can't do that as well as I can. Like, I can read and knit at the same time and such. Um, So, I know that's harder to figure out how to make it work. So, I'm hoping things won't be as stressful for you next quarter. And maybe you'll be able to find little pockets of time to knit. 
because I really would love to see your Hades Town collection come to fruition. I have an extra stitch. This is not good. So um, I hope that answered the question. Mm -hmm. There are people who knit. Mm -hmm. You have to find time to knit. Mm -hmm. Little pockets. Mm -hmm. If that means sticking your knitting in your backpack and pulling it out when you have a few minutes sitting or something. That is the, that is the to figure out how to make it, that happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So thank you so much to Sarah Crafty Sarah for the question. Hope that answered it. Um, Dammy, if somebody has a question, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. And we will answer it. We usually answer it in the order they come in, unless it's a time sensitive one. And there hasn't been a single one we haven't been willing to answer. And as you saw, was that last week the the Doctor Hubs came on? Yeah, sure. I think it might have been. Um, if you have questions for the Dr. Hubs or if you have questions for Pinky Pearly, she'd be happy to come meow at you. Mm -hmm. Hers Although right, not right now because she's sleeping on a heated blanket. Yes. Um, yeah. She had a rough morning, poor baby. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. Uh, now we have a review and a giveaway. Yes, so this is Knit Socks, oh. 15 Cool Patterns for Toasty Feet by Betsy Lee McCarthy. This book was donated to us by Trisha, who is P-A-Z-S Scott? P no, P-A-Z Scott. Yes, Pascott. Pascott. Pascotti. And we're giving away this copy, okay? So, this book is from 2004. So, you will see there's a little bit of dated stuff, like with the fun fur on some of the socks. <laughs> but, it is a really cute book. Um, so, it starts by talking about, um, like, what you need. Handmade is beautiful. Selecting your yarn, your needles, uh, Ooh. gauge, um, knitting socks two at a time, the anatomy of a sock. So they use, unless I missed it, they used heel flap and gusset in all the patterns. No. Which I don't do. Um, how to cast on. Um, working on DPNs. Circular knitting. Decreasing, increasing. Adding new yarn. Turning the heel. Turning the heel. Uh, Closing the toe. Tight, smooth, smooth guts, gussets. Tight. Okay. And then there's uh, 15 patterns. So there's just there's the starter stock and net one, which is just a very basic uh, sock pattern uh, done with worsted weight yarn. I do like I'm not going to show you this on all of them, but like the different sizes are in different columns. So it gives you the instructions over here, but then it tells you so like for the women's small to medium, you're going to cast on 48 stitches. For the women's large to men's medium, you're going to do 56 stitches. Yeah. So I do like how that is laid out because it makes it easy to see um, what you're doing. Sorry, the pages are not turning as fast as I want them to. So there's that. And I like how the little toes change color. Yes, they do. I was just going to say that. So like right here, they're red and purple, but now we turn the page and they're pink and green. And they're watermelon. So they're little guys. So <laughs> this is uh, toddler size, 18 to 24 months done i think you made a scarf out of that exact yarn i think i probably did so um it's a fingering weight <clears throat> you can do the single strand version or you can hold fingering weight doubled for the double strand version plus then you need the fun fur um <laughs> so there's that one <laughs> and then we have the rock and ribbed <laughs> which are women's large slash men's medium. Um, you can do the single rib in fingering weight or the double rib in worsted weight. The double rib looks nicer. Yeah, I like the double rib. And then we have the fireside stripes, which is women's small to medium and women's large slash men's medium. This is done... In DK weight yarn. Um, there's that one. There's also a thing about how to splice your yarn together uh, if you need to do that. There is the Country Clogger, uh, which again is the women's small to medium and the women's large slash men's medium. 
it's done in a DK weight uh, as well. How, and then there's a section on being your own designer using stitch dictionaries. These are cute. Mm -hmm. This is the best foot forward pattern. Um, it's a women's large slash men's medium done in... It looks like fingering. Oh, there's a sport weight version and a worsted weight version. Uh -huh. I was looking here for the yarn and I didn't, I could, didn't see it. <laughs> Those would be nice, like house socks. Did I miss any? No. Here's the shadow box, which is a women's medium to large and it's a bulky weight or a worsted weight uh, pattern. I do love how the toes change color. That's really cute. There's the low roll sporty which I love uh, rolled socks for, for summer. Um, there's a women's small to medium and a women's large slash men's medium. There's a, it's fingering weight held doubled again. So that's cute for um, like summertimey stuff. I like these next ones. Off the cuff. These are the off the cuff. Aren't those cute with the cuff folded down? Again, it's a women's small to medium and a women's large slash men's medium uh, fingering weight yarn. Those are really cute. There's a section on <laughs> weaving and loose ends. Here we are with some more fun fur. This is the straight <laughs> laced pattern. Is, is it? Mm -hmm. This is the women's medium to large. Uh, there's a worsted weight and a fingering weight version. There is the, I like these two, the checkered textures, especially like that one, uh, which is a women's small to medium. There's a fingering weight and a worsted weight. So those are cute. Mm -hmm. There's the classy slip up, which would be nice for men, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, this is a women's large to men's medium. There's a fingering weight and a sport weight version. These are the relax and breathe socks or you can substitute your own words in. Um, this is a women's large, men's medium, um, on a sport weight. But the really cool thing is they give you an alphabet chart so you can make it say whatever you want it to say. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a section about sizing your sock for good fit. I actually really like these. Yeah. These are the winter garden. Um, Even with the color work that's on the gusset? Uh, yeah, that would be difficult for me, but we'd see. Uh, this is a women's medium to large, um, done in a sport weight. Um, yeah, I think they're really cute. Uh, there's a section on st striping without jogs. I, I said Joe's. No, jogs. Um, and about how to avoid ladders how to wood. how to wrap and turn here's the peaks and valleys which is again a women's medium to large but there's also an infant zero to nine month one mm -hmm. uh, done in mm -hmm. fingering weight you could have matching mama kid socks Baby. and acknowledgments and an index which I love because since there's so much educational information in there mm -hmm. so knit socks so if you especially if you like hill flap and gusset for your socks this would be a really great book um, there's some things that are dated but there are some cute ones uh, there was there was a couple that I was like oh I would I would do those so uh, again this is knit socks 15 cool patterns for toasty feet by Betsy Lee McCarthy um, and again, thank you to Trisha P.A.Z. Scott for donating this. Um, if you go to our Ravelry group and find the giveaway thread, there will be a link to the Ravelry uh, page for this book. I want you to find your favorite pair of socks, come back to the giveaway thread and tell us which pair are your favorites. We, that one entry per person. We will lock the thread two weeks from now uh, when we record episode 324 and draw for a winner. Um, you must be a member of the Ravelry group to participate and you'll have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. So if you're interested in knitting socks, enter the giveaway. All right, let's move on to the next segment.
made it to the end of the show. Yay, we're back together. No, it's not the dance. Well, I'm just clapping my hands. So, um, announcements. The great podcaster craft together starts in less than a month. So, follow the link in the show notes. Uh, It's a great way you can double dip in our alongs as well as that one, as well as lots of others. So, check it out. Um, Week two of 31 Days of Christmas is starting on Saturday the 8th. Saturday. Running through Friday the 14th. You will get 25% off all coffee-inspired patterns with the coupon code... 31 days, all capital letters, 31 days. So this will include, let's see if I can remember the names of all these. The one shot, two shot, three shot fingerless mitts, baby chino socks, caramel latte socks, chai Mm -hmm. latte socks, coffee date shawl, espresso campana socks, espresso macchiato socks, flat white wrap, French vanilla cappuccino socks, Hot chocolate with pink marshmallow socks. I love you more than pink spice, p- pumpkin spice socks. Pink spice. Pink spice. Pink was moving. It caught my attention. I love you more than pumpkin spice socks. Instant coffee socks. Peppermint mocha socks. And strawberries and cream frappe socks. Yes. I deserve a high 10. Ah, oh, you hit my cat in the face. Oh. I didn't mean to. I was trying to high 10. She doesn't have paws. So, uh, if you go to JavaPearlsDesigns.com, there'll be an image there. You click on it, and there will be a list of all the patterns that qualify. So, uh, and if you're seeing this right when it goes live on Friday the 7th, today is your last day to do the 25% off all shawls, wraps, cowls, hats, mitts. So, don't miss out. Um, Yeah, and I think that's it, and we're going to be together recording... For the next few weeks. It's so exciting. Um, make sure to stay tuned after the credits for Christmas karaoke mm-hmm. because y'all voted and we're going to sing the song. Um, I don't think we have any other announcements other than normal stuff. A big thank you so much to everybody who supports the podcast, but especially those who support us financially because it's not free for us to do this it does cost us money especially okay. we've got all these prizes we're going to be shipping out it does cost us money so um there are three main ways you can support us financially the first and main way is patreon which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives you get rewards based on what level you donated at in fact i just got an email this morning that our payments have come through and so i need to do patreon It'll actually probably happen tomorrow, though, because I do have some VA work I have to get done after the podcast. Um, if you'd like to know more about it or want to sign up, go to... Patreon.com slash GeekyGirlsNet. What's another way? There's a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation. And we are Amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. Uh, if you're shopping on Amazon, especially for Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the holidays, if you go to GeekyGirlsNet.com first... Look in the sidebar or in the bottom part of the uh, show notes uh, for your appropriate Amazon image. Well, your .com in the US, .co.uk or .ca. Click that. It'll take you to Amazon. You shop. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's a great way to support the podcast, doing something you would be doing anyway. And with that, I think we're going to say goodbye. Dammy, where can they find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsnoot.com. There, there are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. And until next week, we wish you a happy holiday season, uh, happy knitting, and we'll see you again next week. But don't forget to stay for after the credits. Bye. Bye. Silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring-a-ling, hear them ring, soon it will be Christmas Day. 
city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. And on every street corner you'll hear silver bells. Silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring-a-ling, hear them ring. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. Oh. See you next week. Bye.